Okay, I make that five minutes too, so let's get started. Um, quick admin beforehand, we've heard a few alarms going off, it's because the French government are testing the alarm system apparently. You can't really prepare for that with a talk, so like, uh, we'll see how that goes. If your phone goes off, it's okay, please uh, just get it. If you, if you can, it's no problem. So uh, let's get into the actual talk. Welcome to Cryptographically Signed Swag. Thank you all for coming here, bonjour. Uh, I hope you've had a good KubeCon. Uh, the scheduling means that obviously you've come here after the project pavilion is closed. So we're talking about the booth, which you cannot go to. That's a shame, but what we can do is tell you what happened at the booth, and maybe at Salt Lake City in November we'll be able to see you there, and you can get a certificate there. Um, so we are three third manager maintainers. My name's Ash, this is Tim, and this is Mayal. Uh, we all happen to work at Venify, and uh, we spend at least part of our time maintaining Cert Manager. Uh, quick show of hands, who has heard of Cert Manager? Yeah, that's what we like to see. Uh, who runs Cert Manager? Who runs Cert Manager in production? Yeah, great. So you're all experts already, you don't need to listen. Um, just in case anyone doesn't know, um, Cert Manager is what we like to say is the best way to get certificates in Kubernetes. So uh, you're used to writing YAML to get a pod, Cert Manager adds the ability to write YAML to get a certificate uh, that you can use for your website, say, or for interpod communication with encryption. And the key really is that once you've told Cert Manager how to get a certificate, you can actually, like it already knows, so it can renew the certificate as well and it won't expire and cause an outage, and that's always good. Of course, we support um, various different ways of getting your uh, certificate. That includes Acme, Let's Encrypt, uh, that's what most people use. But we can also do private PKI, which is kind of what we'll be talking about today in a way, a HashiCorp Vault and a bunch of other, including Venify. Um, there's a picture here and you might recognize uh, some of the faces on it, uh, certainly my shiny head. Um, this is what the booth looked like and this is what we'll be talking about today. And this is the result of that. So this is a stamped cert manager certificate that was issued by cert manager and then printed out in physical form. I can't show you the other side because it has a QR code on it which would let you download my certificate. So I'm, I'm being really careful to just show you the front here. Um, we're going to be talking about the journey that we went on here and uh, how this works behind the scenes and how we've improved it here for Paris. Uh, here's some big numbers. This is the standard slide. Uh, 20 million monthly chart downloads, we think. Uh, it's, it's all good stuff. A big milestone to point out there is that our graduation process has started now. We were hoping to get it done in time for Paris, but not quite there. We're still incubating. Hopefully by Salt Lake, we'll get there. Um, of course, there's other big numbers here if you enjoy big numbers. So there's a brief introduction. Uh, the best way to start now is to tell you a bit about the history of Cert Manager and how we got to here, where I'm holding a physical Cert Manager certificate in front of you all. So I'll pass over to Tim. Awesome. Thanks, Ash. All right. So. How did we get to these impressive numbers, right? I'll try to kind of explain that to you by guiding you through the history of Cert Manager. So big disclaimer here, I wasn't there for all of it because I'm still pretty young. So to give you an idea, uh, in 2016, I was only 17 years old. So, but that's actually where the journey started. So Cert Manager actually comes from this project called Cube Lego, which is basically a controller that was created by this company called Chatstack. And basically what the controller did is it looked at ingress resources and at the annotations on those resources. And based on those annotations, um, it got or it created certificates. And those certificates it got from uh, Let's Encrypt, which is still actually an exact use case that we still support with Cert Manager. And this was the predecessor of Cert Manager. So that's kind of where the idea was born. Then one year later, the actual term cert manager was coined and the project was created. Um, the first release was made and this release was already a bit more cloud native. So included here was, for example, the notion of like a certificate resource and some issuer resources. And so that was in 2017. And this API of these resources has been improving for the next couple of years. And then in 2020, the first stable release of Cert Manager was created, the V1 release, and we're actually still supporting that V1 release. So that's like still the version that we are building on. So if you have a version, or if you have like resources from then, they will still work with the 
search manager from today. In the same year, we also started our CNCF journey, and that basically meant that we became a CNCF sandbox project. Then two years later, we actually got to the incubating state, which is already a great achievement. And since then, we have been working hard on getting to the next stage, which is basically to become a CNCF graduated project, right? And one major milestone towards that goal is to complete a security audit, a CNCF sponsored security audit. And I'm very happy to announce here at KubeCon that we actually completed that. So we have passed the security audit and Monday we, on Monday we actually published a post where you can find out more information about the security audit. So I would like to thank the, um, the team from Adalogix who actually performed the audit and of course my colleagues in the cert manager team to fix all the issues that were found and to make cert manager a better product. So the next step of course is to get to the graduation, graduation state and that will be hopefully for later this year. Okay, so I mentioned before about the uh, Cert Manager booth and the things we've been doing there. Um, this has been going on for a while now. Uh, we're going to talk later about what's changed, but first you need to know what's happening behind the scenes. And for that, we've got the primary expert on the matter, Mael. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm going to talk about, about specifically what, how these came to be. And the first thing I want to know is, has anyone in this room gotten something like this? Can you sh Oh, that's, yes, that's, that's a lot. Uh, so, uh, these certificates, these cards are made of, on the front, you can see a receipt of a SEX 509 certificate. And on the back, you have a QR code that contains a certificate. And on the front, you have this nice stamp. The idea was to somehow mix the physical and uh, digital into one card. So digital, obviously, the X509 certificate and the uh, physical is the seal that you usually see, uh, you would see 200 years ago or more. Uh, I'll be honest, when I created this demo in Valencia 2022, uh, it was this stamping idea, which frankly, let's say it, that's the most fun of this uh, demo. It came from a person called Marcia. Marcia was a maintainer of the Cert Manager project, and she had this great idea for the V1 of Cert Manager to do thank you cards with actual uh, wax and with, the, with this melting pot and candle, and she, she would pour it on the, the card and uh, there, send it to all the contributors. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be honest, it, uh, I, I, tr I tried at home, I bought everything, and then I contacted the CNCF event team uh, who told me that uh, candles aren't allowed at KubeCon. So we took, uh, I, I bought this glue gun instead, which isn't ideal either because it stinks like the, the plastic. When you keep the glue gun turned on all the time, it, it, it really like does this weird uh, smell. Now, we have done this demo over four different KubeCons. That was Valencia, the first one we made over 225 printed certificates. That was awesome because everybody was talking about it in tweet, on Twitter when it still existed. And then we continued in Detroit, Amsterdam, and uh, Chicago with over 800 certificate printed. The moment I remember the most in these, uh, during, uh, while staffing the booth was this time in Chicago where over 20 people were in line waiting to get a printed certificate and we were like rushing, printing, 
stamping and I was crazy and I, that was, yeah, that's super nice to see, especially for a project uh, pavilion booth. Now to the specific of, specifics of what you would see on the booth, if you came to the booth, I'll tell you exactly what was on the table. Uh, there was this printer uh, and a Raspberry Pi. That's essentially what is uh, the demo. On the Raspberry, we have Kubernetes running with K3S. With Cert Manager, obviously, we are using Cert Manager. And a UI running also on the Pi and a Kubernetes controller. You would fill in your email on the UI. Then uh, it would create the UI written in Go would uh, create a certificate resource in Kubernetes, which would then be issued by Cert Manager using a self-signed root CA uh, on the Pi. Not really secure, but whatever. And the user would click print and the controller would pick up the certificate and print, send it over USB to the printer. And obviously we would stamp it. Uh, sometimes we would miss and the stamp would be weird, but that's what we usually say is it's, you get a unique certificate at every single time. And there is even one person, for some reason I stamped on the back also, so on the front and on the back. Uh, one weird or crazy or whatever choice I made in Valencia because I could was to write the Kubernetes controller in Bash using kubectl and, and that's it, kubectl and, and jq. Um, it's not ideal because editing this file as any Bash script is terrible. Uh, error handling is really hard. You have or error handling and printing the errors is just weird. But I think it's a great way of getting started. If you don't know Go, you definitely go, you definitely know kubectl. And kubectl get watch, the flag watch, can get you started with reconciling objects, objects in Kubernetes. And you can do it right from your terminal. You can see an example on the printer search GitHub repository uh, if you want to see more. Finally, finally about these uh, QR codes on the back. Uh, in Valencia and all the others, other KubeCons except this one, I chose to have the QR code contain the certificate but not the private key. Uh, the, the whole certificate was printed on the QR code that was great because we didn't need to store anything, but the only thing that you could do with this QR code was to show the certificate in the browser, and that was it. Uh, but Ashley had an idea to do something with the private key, and that's what he's going to present now. Thank you, Mayo. So, yeah, we noticed while we were doing this booth uh, before, a lot of people were saying, what can I actually do with this, apart from take it home as a souvenir? And we wanted to do something about that and mean, uh, like add a way for people to actually use them. So we love the souvenirs, and there's nothing wrong with them, but we wanted to do a bit more. And we uh, wanted specifically to be able to use these certificates for TLS, because that's why everyone's using Cert Manager. That's why you use it in production um, with all those people that had their hands up. Um, we also just wanted to have a bit of fun with it, and it was great fun. Here is an example of one of the certs that we actually issue. This one's mine. This is the one that I held up here and didn't show you the QR code for. Um, so what's new with them? Well, the first thing is you can get the private key now. And with the private key, you can use the certificate. So um, the QR codes have been updated. And actually, it links to a, the same page that you would get if you were at the booth. Uh, that page allows you to download a tarball with all the certificate, with a certificate in it, with the private key in it, and with a little bonus script, which I'll talk about later. Um, th this completes the loop. It means that you can actually use the certificate that you get. Another little advantage is uh, ECDSA. If there are any other certificate nerds in the audience, uh, I'm, I'm a big ECDSA fan. Um, the, 
our issuing chain always used EC ECDSA, so the signatures were always using elliptic curves, but the printed certificates actually had RSA public keys. Now we're using ECDSA everywhere, which has the advantage that the certs are smaller and faster. And I get to say elliptic curves, which is always cool. Um, as an example of that, like a visual illustration, this is the difference in size between an RSA key, which is on the left, and an ECDSA key, which is on the right. It's sort of a, you can actually see how much smaller they are, um, in a textual representation at least. Um, I've talked about the chain there. Another thing that we changed is actually the chain itself. So before, we used to set up the booth essentially from scratch for every KubeCon. Uh, we've now issued a stable root certificate. I've been telling people for the whole conference that it's 100 years long. It'll expire in 100 years' time. Uh, I didn't actually check that, but I'm pretty sure it's true. In any case, it expires in a, it's the next generation's problem. Um, what we're doing now is generating new intermediate certificates in each location. So we can use the same chain, and we can actually keep on expanding this demo to future KubeCons. So in Salt Lake City, we can do something else fun, and who knows what that will be, where future ideas are uh, always welcome in the Cert Manager community. Um, it gives us a lot of flexibility. Uh, but the real fun thing is that it's, there's not much point in just giving you access to the private key. You need to be able to use it. So what we did is created a guest book, and it's super simple. It's just an uh, uh, endpoint that you can post to, and you can only post if you have a certificate that we issued at the booth. So either you got a certificate from us, or you somehow stole our root certificate, and I hope you didn't do that. Um, so I mentioned a script earlier that comes in the tarball. That script is actually a quick way of being able to sign the guest book. You can customize the message if you like. I know there's some people here that have done that. Uh, I got to be first because I wrote it. Um, and you see my message up at the top there. Obviously, we've obfuscated the email addresses um, for obvious reasons, but like, it, it's a really cool way of completing the circle and going back and sort of taking what you got at the booth and actually interacting more, learning more, and seeing how this works. Um, if we can do this with uh, certificates in person, there's no reason you can't do this for machines in your production clusters and do mutual TLS everywhere. Um, of course, we've also got Easter coming up very soon, and we've added some Easter eggs as well, because while we were changing things, we couldn't resist. Uh, we've added them to both the, cert the certificates that you've got and the chain itself. Uh, of course, we set the country code to France. Um, of, we, we couldn't resist that. Obviously, in Salt Lake City, we'll set it to US. Uh, we set the organization in uh, the certificate to CNCF and the organizational unit to cert manager because, of course, um, the cert subject is kind of a bit pointless now because it's not really uh, conveying any useful information for doing like website security but it is a great place to store Easter eggs for booth demos. Um, we actually used to put the email address that you gave us into the, sub into the subject itself. Um, the modern way of doing things with TLS is to use the subject alt name extension, which uh, we now use. We put your email address in there and we put your name into the subject. And so that's a few little things that we've changed. Basically, it's from start to end a demo of how you can use Cert Manager, obviously all running on Cert Manager, and it's also still a souvenir and still a lot of fun. Um, the, the only shame really is that we didn't do this sooner because I know people have been to every KubeCon in the past and got a Cert Manager certificate and they're collecting them like infinity stones. So it would be nice if, uh, if they'd still be able to use those old ones, but that's in the past. So I've talked about what we've done here, but there is a serious point to this. It's not just souvenirs. Uh, what we're going to do now is I'll hand over to Tim, who's going to tell you what we can actually learn from this demo and show you why it's sort of a good representation of how Cert Manager works in the real world. All right. Yes, indeed. So please pay attention to this section, because this is a section that you have to tell your boss about when you try to explain that you uh, listen to talk about physical certificates. So basically, this is what the demo looks like, the issuance flow looks like uh, for the demo. And what we can learn from this, basically, is that once you understand how this issuance flow works, this issuance flow kind of reoccurs in every scenario where you're using Cert Manager. So it reoccurs when you're using Cert Manager in your production cluster, even if it's like 
a thousand nodes and a thousand clusters. Um, all right, so to quickly go over the demo again, uh, first, you have the user interface. There you enter your name, your email address. Those are like the, the details that you want in the final certificate, right? So you specify them in the user interface. What actually happens behind the scenes is that this information is passed into this certificate resource. So the certificate resource is a Kubernetes resource that cert manager is actively looking at. And once it sees that such a certificate resource is created, it will actually create a certificate request resource, which is like a one-time resource that's used to basically tell an issuer, actually, I would like to get a certificate for this um, certificate request. After that is done, the issuer creates the certificate, it signs it, and then Cert Manager puts the result in a secret resource. So this secret resource is then used to print the QR code on the back. And that's kind of the issuance flow that reappears everywhere with Cert Manager. Um, there are, however, two ways to kind of deviate from this issuance flow. And the first way to do that is to change the way you request a certificate. So by making these alterations to the issuance flow, you can actually make Cert Manager work better for your specific use case, for your specific scenario, um, for your specific business, basically. So, in order to request a certificate in a different way than just creating a certificate resource, you can, for example, annotate an ingress resource. And if you remember, that's actually what I talked about with the Cube Lego um, controller. So, this is the original use case that's still supported. You add the annotations on the ingress, Cert Manager creates a certificate resource for you, and then the, issue, the uh, certificate is issued and put in a secret. The same applies to like gateway resource, which are this new cool API. Um, an alternative that we have for certificate resources and secrets is a CSI driver. So we have like a cert manager CSI driver. We also have like a cert manager CSI driver Spiffy, which is another cool buzz term. Um, but basically what this does, it, lets you, through the CSI properties, it lets you specify what you want in a certificate, like DNS names, uh, subject, and so on. And then, instead of creating a secret, it actually directly puts the certificate in a volume for you. So you can mount the volume in your container. And this is like a no secret um, solution. So I'm not sure if you've ever heard of like a no secrets policy in your company. Um, I'm sure if you've heard about it, you will remember. Um, but basically, there's a solution for that. Another way to request certificates is through integrations with service meshes. One service mesh in particular that we support is Istio. So we have this solution called Istio CSR, which is basically an integration between Cert Manager and Istio. And it lets Istio directly request certificates from Cert Manager, and it puts those certificates directly in the sidecars um, that are used by Istio. Right, and then the second way to kind of uh, change this issuance flow and to make it fit better for, you, for your use case is by changing the issuer integration. So in our demo, we actually requested a certificate from a CA issuer, at least that's what we call it in Cert Manager. And basically what that means is that somewhere in your Kubernetes cluster, there is actually a CA certificate that lives in a secret together with this private key. So it's like public private key pair, it lives in a secret, and you point cert manager to that secret, and you say, okay, well, now all certificates that I request, just sign them using this um, certificate, the CA certificate that I have in the secret. But of course, that not, that's not really a good solution, because if you accidentally get rid of the secret, you, got, you just lost your CA, right? And um, if that's like a root CA, you have to rotate all your clients. Um, so that's kind of an issue. Um, also, like if you have like multiple clusters and you want to share uh, a CA across multiple clusters, you could kind of copy the secrets across all these clusters, but also, that's also not the recommended way, I would say, um, since like copying private key material across clusters is not ideal. So basically, I would advise you to use uh, one of our issuer integrations. For example, we have like, for private PKI, we have like um, Ashcop Fault integration, Vanify integration, AWS integration, Google Cloud integration. And then for public, CA, uh, for public PKI, we have um, this ACME 
uh, solution, uh, integration. I'm sure you've all heard of it, since it's the most popular one, um, definitely in combination with Let's Encrypt. So this is actually an open API. You can add your own integrations for issuers, and there's a full list of these issuers, but like a lot more that are created by our community, and you can find the list on the Search Manager website that by just clicking on the link in this presentation. Thank you, Tim. Uh, the slides are available for download as well if you didn't get that link. Um, so we've talked a bit about the booth here and we've uh, sort of gone over how actually this is a kind of a silly demo, but really it's how every production cluster running Cert Manager uh, works. Um, and it's not just souvenirs. It, like, we said, like I said before, this is a full Cert Manager demo. If we, can, if we can do this for people, you can do this for machines. Like more encryption might be the right solution in your cluster. It's worth evaluating. If you're already running Cert Manager, uh, it's actually very easy to start doing like expanded, ex expanded stuff using Cert Manager. Um, it's too late to go to the booth. I'm really sad about that. If we've been on Wednesday morning, then if, if this talk had been on Wednesday morning, then you could all rush off and get your certificates now. Uh, you can't, sorry. But you can join our community, and uh, we have Slack channels and we have regular meetings, which uh, all documents are on our website. Again, these slides are available for download. Um, we love it when people get in touch. Our regular meetings include daily stand-ups, which are EU time zone friendly. So if you're based around here in Europe, then you can come and join in every day if you want. Um, we also have uh, bi-weekly meetings, which are great if you have sort of longer form questions uh, that last for an hour. Um, I'd like to say thank you all for coming, or merci. Uh, <laughs> we thought ahead this time. Uh, we know that sometimes people don't like to ask questions. There are microphones that may be behind you. So we actually printed some certificates and brought them with us. So anyone that does ask a question can still get a certificate, and these are the last ones that will be available in Paris. Um, like, don't all rush at once, but of course, thank you all for coming. Thank you for coming late on a Friday. You've been great. Thank you. I really thought there'd be a rush for questions. This is good. To, <laughs> that's the question, I suppose. Yeah, I kind of get a certificate, he says. There are microphones back there if you do have any questions. Um, I feel like an air hostess. Your nearest microphone may be behind you. Is, is, yeah, that's oh, we've got another one here. Yeah, hi. Thank hi. you for the demo. Uh, I already have my cert, so uh, I have a question. Like, uh, when generating the certificate, uh, if we like generate it with the same name and same email, uh, so would it be generated or is it like unique or how how this this work? So uh, you're asking about the booth specifically, uh, or in general, like search so, manager. So manage, um, So the identity of a certificate is actually a surprisingly complicated topic. Um, I mentioned about the subject alt names extension in certificates. That can hold many DNS names, email addresses, IP addresses. That all works. Um, cert Manager can generate multiple certs that have the same uh, subject alt names. It'll handle all that just fine. Um, in the demo, we have a unique constraint on the email address so, just so that people can't spam us. But Cert Manager can generate anything that you want, really. Um, it's, it's all good. It's just, it's like certificate, it's a Kubernetes resource, right? So you can't have two pods that are identical with the same name, but if you have a different resource name, you can have two. That's fine. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Do you want one? <laughs> Anyone else? You can come and ask us questions down here afterwards as well. We'll still be here, of course. Oh, someone's walking over. Yeah, go. Fire away. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, quick question. So I... Saw a paper saying that they were able, somebody in a specific country, I'm not going to name my country, they were able to decrypt the, uh, one of the certificates, the uh, RSA2048. So even if I put everything using MTLS, how can I protect myself against AI? Well, uh, so 
they can't, as far as I know. <laughs> um, it, the question was about uh, people claiming to be able to decrypt RSA 2048. That is not, as far as I know, possible. That will be possible if quantum com computers come out that are powerful enough. There are no co quantum computers today that can reliably do that. Uh, it requires factorizing very large numbers, and quantum computers just can't do that yet. Um, some people have claimed to do it. I've not seen any actual evidence of that being the case. You're certainly correct that that is a threat that looms on the horizon. Um, cryptographers differ in how soon they think it will happen. I'm not concerned about it in the next 10 years, personally. Uh, I'm not a cryptographer, but I'm not concerned. Um, but we are starting to think about that as a thing now. A like cert manager in the future could well be quantum resistant. Um, that is a thing that we could do. Um, certainly, it's something to keep an eye on. It's a really interesting area of research. Um, it's something we'll look at. Quick follow-up. I was not concerned about AI a year ago. AI. So AI cannot, um, as far as science knows, AI cannot decrypt um, RSA 2048, as, as far as we're aware. Um, AI might claim to be able to because it hallucinates. <laughs> but uh, I, don't, I don't think that that is a threat that I've ever encountered. I'm, I'm not too concerned by that. I think we're still secure for now. You might want to look at this series called um, Silicon Valley, where this actually is one of the... Well, maybe I'm spoiling now, but this is one of the interesting parts of Silicon Valley. Yeah, maybe. Uh, we still have time, yep. Uh, see you at the mic there. Go, go ahead. Oh. Hi. You go first. Hi, thank you for your demo. Uh, is Mm, cert manager um, solution uh, suitable for multi-cluster environments? It is, yeah. Um, so there's not really any orchestration beyond you installing into multiple clusters. What a lot of people do is when they set up Kubernetes, they install cert manager at the same time. Uh, they treat it like it's a standard part of the of, of the of the cluster, if you like. It's not, but we, we like to think that it almost is. Um, that will work if you sort of just apply, install Cert Manager across many clusters. There's not really any orchestration beyond that, um, but it does work just fine in multi-cluster environments. There might be some hiccups with things like DNS challenges, but um, mostly it, it just works, uh, in air quotes. Also, also, like I mentioned before, in the, with the issuer integrations, you can have like one issuer that you share across multiple clusters. So then basically all your clusters, they share one CA. And that's really how you do multi-cluster setup because then you trust this one CA and you can kind of communicate with any of the clusters. It doesn't really matter because they all share this one trust domain. Excellent point. Um, I think we've still got time. Yeah. Down there. <laughs> Miles rushing. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Uh, is it possible to use Cert Manager to manage SSH certificates currently? The question was, is it possible to manage SSH certificates with Cert Manager? Unfortunately, the Cert in Cert Manager only applies to X509 certificates. We don't do SSH certificates. That would be a very cool project. SSH certificates are awesome, but I find the documentation is very challenging with them. So it could do with an SSH Cert Manager. Um, it's something that would be super cool to talk about at one of our meetings if you, uh, if you ever wanted to come along. Unfortunately, we don't have that today, um, but it, it sounds cool. I th think, uh, yep, two minutes. So if you're, if you're quick, we've got one last uh, question. I just uh, can confirm that we successfully run uh, Cert Manager in several clusters with Let's Encrypt uh, and issuing the certificate for the same uh, domain. Uh, it, they obviously conflict for challenge, but uh, then they re retry and they eventually get this. Uh, my question is, if I want to, uh, can I build a CA authority, some kind of uh, stack, like I don't want to have the private key even for intermediate certificate on every cluster because uh, intermediate certificates are, I cannot limit intermediate certificate to only uh, issues uh, certificates for subdomains. So I would want to have uh, some secure uh, cluster where I will run certificate authority and other clusters uh, use this uh, one as, as a sure. So it's, 
The question was about having one trusted cluster that stores the CA and then having other clusters consume that. That's possible with um, issuers like Venify and Vault. Um, with a CA issuer, it's not possible. It's not uh, designed to work like that. Um, I'll talk to you more about that after, after this because I think we're out of time. Uh, thank you again. Merci beaucoup.